Five young adults have gone missing near the area of Rangeley, Pennsylvania after responding to a random website. The website was seeking volunteers to help find clues about a missing child. A new video has just been released from the crime scene. What is up guys? Welcome to another episode of Katie Afraidy on the Fangoria Network. I'm your host, Katie Hattenbach, and when I tell you I got an email saying, hey, do you want an interview for this movie called Devin? I was like, sure. And they're like, oh, it's with Jenny J Wow. And I was like, J Wow. Like J-Lo. And then it hit me. Jersey Shore, ever heard of it? Yeah. <laughs> J Wow wrote and directed a horror movie crazy and i got to chat with her and she's an absolute delight and it was such a fun interview guys please enjoy jenny j wow directorial debut Devin. I'm a comedian, I'm a filmmaker, and I'd usually chat with comedians and filmmakers about horror movies. So I'm- Jeez, no pressure, holy shit. <laughs> no, it's, so it's a silly, goofy time. No, I'm a fan, yeah. but I'm also like, look, this film has pretty colors. And they're like, um, let's hyper analyze that. I'm like, nah, it's just pretty colors, you know? <laughs> okay, did you see Devin? Cause I'm afraid I... of hyper analyzing. Oh my yeah, I did. did? Okay. Yeah, I did. Of course I did. How would it be terrible if I was like, no, I didn't. Could you tell me everything about that would be I awful. get that normally. I really? hope being oh, on okay. reality TV and sometimes they don't send episodes ahead of time. Right. We have to like lay out the season. So this is a new realm where people actually get it ahead of time. And I'm like, oh my God, wait. Like, so I'm just I'm just nervous all around. And plus you're like the biggest website for this genre. So it's like, I feel very privileged and honored right now, but also nervous. Back at you. Don't be nervous. I'm <laughs> hey, I'm nervous too. It's all good. We can be nervous together. It'll be great. Okay. It'll Fair. be So first of all, you made a movie. Still can't believe that, but yes, I did. Congrats. That's huge. Thank That's Thank so you. big. So what inspired you to, because you wrote and directed Devin. So what how, what inspired you? Um, so if we're going to take it back to like 1932, the original inspo was I, I was a super fan of horror films. Even as a child, I would steal my dad's beta max and watch all of the classics on it from the 70s and 80s. And it was really just a beautiful way for me to like disconnect and disassociate. Um, now that you watch Devin, you know it's more of like a psychological thriller. And I really fed off that because my childhood was surrounded by mental illness. I was in a very, you know, it was a stigma back then, but my dad was a single father. My mom was diagnosed with schizophrenia when I was still in diapers and she had to go to an institution and she was hospitalized very early on. And because of that, I found a great way to disconnect, not through, you know, the romance and the, and the love stories, but really through comedy and horror and horror being my favorite one, because it just made me feel alive in a way that like no other type of genre could. So that doesn't mean that I can automatically become a director. I was just a super fan. I loved horror movies. And then anytime a big one like Blair Witch or Saw or Paranormal would come out, I would be like noon seating by myself watching it because nobody would freaking go with me. And I was like, this is it. This is, you know, I would go with like the 12 o'clock show and all by myself with my popcorn and soda. But that's how it slowly transitioned. I was like, what if, I took my love of it and created it. And during Snooki and JWoww, we got to film at Penhurst Asylum and I freaked, not in like a scared way. And a, this is like the most beautiful backdrop of a horror movie I have ever seen in my life. And I need to grow up one day and film something here. And then that brings me to 2020 where I decided to have my oh shit moment 
And my best friend still kept the text on February 8th, 2020, posted it to my Instagram the other day where I woke up and I was like, so do you think it's weird that like I want to shoot a horror movie? And he goes like a featured film. And I was like, well, I guess I hope it would be a featured film because I wasn't even thinking like that. I just wanted to film something. And because I'm the weirdo that I am that I love, um, I was like, do you want to spend Valentine's Day at Penhurst Asylum and just mess around? So we took our boyfriends at the time, fell in love with it all over again, like I did back in 2011, shooting Snooki and Wow, And I signed on the dotted line immediately. I was like, I'm going to film something here. And then two weeks later, COVID hit. And I was like, fuck. I don't know if I can shoot something here. And that's, that was my make or break point. That was like, you could bow out easily and walk away or you could do this. And me and my friends did it. So now I'm really nervous again. <laughs> don't be. That's amazing. First of all, I, so I watched the whole thing and then I had to rewind the credits because I saw Penhurst and I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. you shot it so haunted so like that place is if you watch any ghost show they go there all the time that's the place where they see like the most fucked up shit oh we did what so besides filming a horror movie like did you expect i don't know if you believe in ghosts did you see anything did you feel that's, anything? that's the ongoing joke with the jersey shore production company because they shot snook wow back then I think because it was daytime and we rolled in a hundred deep in 2011, mm -hmm. I didn't feel anything. So I was like, this place isn't haunted, but it's beautiful. And cut to 2020. Mm -hmm. I have never been so scared in my life in the most exhilarating way. It's the only way I can explain it. The ball scene of the ball moving, mm -hmm. that was just picked up by accident. Nobody was there. Um, there's a scene of Tara where it's the mom and she's holding the camera, like staring at herself and a shadow walks by her. I swear, cause we're going to submit that footage. We have three scene. We have three cameras on that same scene filming. There is nobody that walked by her. I had my audio guy, Mark, who I love and he's my lighting tech. Mark would be like, be right back. And he would go with the manager's daughter and he would like, kick a ball in one of the rooms where a kid is and the ball would just come back to him. Now, mind you, I got goosebumps talking about I, it. I, my eyes are watering. I have goosebumps. Terrified. <laughs> but I will say, except for Quaker, which is a building that they had to shut down because of the negative energy there, I truly believe they were just kids that wanted to play and they messed around. They would turn my cameras off. They would shut my lights off. They would drain batteries. They would move balls, objects, but it's definitely a place that you go with the intention of leaving. <laughs> you are not to overstay your welcome. And it made, I think, the movie, it, it didn't even make it better. It truly made the movie. That place just like chills you to your core. And that was the reason why I wanted to make it because you can take found footage, you can take a low budget, and you can go into a place like that and make something great because it's just naturally terrifying. Yeah. Ugh. Again, my <laughs> eyes were, I was like, no, that's so cool though, that, you know, you don't, who needs to spend money on special effects when you have a really haunted place and the ghosts do it for you? Truly, truly. It's like, you know, you get bang for your buck, right? <laughs> Here's it, it. Hey, so filmmakers, if you're on a a budget, just shoot in a really haunted location. That's it. No just big deal. Hope, hope it works out. It'll be fine. You I will say this: bring lots of batteries, because for whatever reason, in those places, they suck batteries dry. Which is something again, I did not believe until it happened to me. So here we are. That's cr so. Prior to this experience, did you? believe it in ghosts have you had that experience before no I remember back in 2011 being there I got yelled at by one of the producers because I didn't believe and I wasn't being respectful and I own that now because I was like just have them punch me in my face like why can't they hit me like I would like try and piss them off there 
and nothing was happening. And my producer was like, dude, like my mom works in this industry. She's a medium, like you're disrespecting her craft. And I was like, but I don't think it's a real 2020 changed me forever. And it made me take a step back and be like, there is just something that you cannot explain. I don't know if you ever had that type of moment, but like, it was like a whoa moment where I had my friends that are for over 10 years that never believed crying on set because they bet their bottom dollar. Like they saw a child running in the woods. They heard one scream. I mean, truly petrified. And these are logical thinking people just like me that loved horror films, but never thought they would be in one. Yeah. No, I, so I used to work at the comedy store and it's very, very haunted there. Um, very, very haunted. Uh, and we did a little, uh, we, you know, put EMFs and, uh, in. Yeah. Investigated everything. And I don't, I don't know what I felt, but I remember falling down the stairs because I was so freaked out. I was like, I don't want to be in this room anymore. I'm done. I don't want to, I'm done. And I, yeah. yeah. It's it's very spooky, but it's it's so cool, and I think that stuff's so interesting. So as soon as I saw Kendrick, I was like, I need to ask all about this because yeah. no, it's and it, to me, it's like it changed me because once you feel that, it's like you're always questioning, like you know, you question things just differently. I guess at least I did. Yeah, that's so cool. That's who would have thought filming a horror film would also lead to you know maybe this is your future maybe you're like horror, but also on the side you're gonna become the next ghost hunter i would be honored in any way if if you know i would go pursue that career if people wanted devin too if they take me serious to direct something else i am so just i'm such a fan so i just want people to respect the fact that I'm a fan and I want to make things that I would love if I was watching it. So horror film wise, what are your, what were your influences for Devin? Um, definitely Blair Witch. I followed the Blair Witch protocol and I wish I read the book. It came out the same year that I shot this and it was just like, I missed it. But now that I watched the book, cause my friend that made the outwaters showed it to me and I was like, this is fucking great. It's like a how to. And, um, I, like I would give the cast just enough I didn't let them understand their character development until they needed to. They never knew the ending. Like I just breadcrumbed it along. Mm -hmm. uh, I also used a lot of Jersey Shore in there because Jersey Shore is how I know how to shoot things on the fly, you know, very fluid, not stopping for takes, just cut and go and really just live in the atmosphere. I also, I don't know if I took anything from it, but I just love the taking of Deborah Logan is one of my favorite mm -hmm. footage films. And it was so just beautifully done. You stuck them in a house. She, she went crazy or did she go crazy? Uh, or what did she suffer from Alzheimer's or was she, yeah. you know, possessed? But like those just unsettling elements of grandma losing her shit. Like I wanted unsettling elements and, yeah, I just, and then I took from things that I thought were missing, mm -hmm. just natural. Um, I thought if my cast and my characters could be uncomfortable, then the movie would be uncomfortable. That's so. a good way to put it. Also, I was literally going to ask how, you know, being in reality TV helped you with directing, but you answered it already. That's yeah. so, I would have never, you know, put those two together. Like, I'll just keep the cameras rolling, keep them interacting. I think that's such... Um, a good way, you know, to transition from. Yeah. Work. Very loose scripts, but I always said improv, if you feel like it, if there, I wouldn't cut if we were just dead silence and that's how natural conversations started when they were sitting. Mm -hmm. I just let them constantly interact as their characters. And then I'm like, now I get it. Now I finally get why they did what they did on our show. No cell phones, internet and TV. Cause you had to sit around and you just start shooting the shit and talking to each other. And that's what they ended up doing in the movie. And I used a lot of those takes because they were just organically having beautiful conversations that 
made you love or hate the characters enough to want to know what happens to them next? Very well put. Very well. Oh. <laughs> also, you are doing great. I just want to let oh, you know. You're doing great. So proud to, I just, it's such a big deal to make a movie. So I'm like, and anytime I'm yeah. like, hey, we did it. We made movies. It's a big deal. Um, it really is. So horror film wise, what is your favorite horror film or favorite horror films? Because I know some people can't, you know, pin down just one. And then what horror film scared you as a kid that made you love horror? The subgenres. So I can't just pick one because, you know, psychological thriller versus slasher. But I, I have to pick the cult and the big classics. Like my go to franchise that I watch is so weird, but it's so gruesome and I love it. From Thanksgiving to Christmas, that gets me in the Christmas spirit is the Saw franchise. I love starting Thanksgiving off with Saw and ending with like the sixth installment. Everyone laughs. There, I have a video I just sent to Complex the other day where I'm watching him getting his brain <laughs> cut open and I pan to Santa Claus, my hometown Santa, just driving by on like the fire truck and like, the <laughs> but I'm like, tis the season. Um, but the one that, and also like, I think Saul one terrified me early 20s. But as a child, the original Freddy. Do I look back and laugh a little bit now? But nothing more terrifying than as a child in early teens trying to sleep and thinking someone is going to pull you in to a place that you can't come back from. And yeah, that in my early days just terrified me in a good way. Made me love the genre. That's so funny. The saw. That's so funny. I do. I always had Christmas on the last one. It's just a tradition. Um, okay. So out of your Jersey Shore cast, who is the m most likely to die first in a horror film? Benny. Benny. I, want, I would murder him in the first three minutes just because he would say something asinine that would piss me off and I want to break his knees and slowly kill him. Paulie would outlast everyone though. He's smart. He's very actually, he has great common sense. Not Vinny. Take him out slowly and painfully. You're like, I'm not even the killer. But I couldn't even, yeah, I couldn't even like, <laughs> I feel like I, I'm no, no. He, I want to direct a movie where I can take him out in the first five minutes. I'm like, God willing, I get another movie where I can beat his ass in a film just because he needs it. <laughs> oh my God. He says he has this like weird knee deformity, like called like ashwagandha. I, I call it that. And I'm like, good. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take out your kneecaps in the film. That's like my dream. You're going to go. Oh, I was going to say you're going to go full human centipede, but maybe we don't do that. So those are movies I can't get into. Yeah, don't don't watch them. Don't. It's although the third one's weirdly political, but like really, it's interesting. I I was like, wow, I didn't think I would enjoy these. The the, the third one, not the I, okay. but I was, I was dry heaving through all of them. So okay. that's you know, do, do, give and take. Yeah. You, you watch it once, and then you never watch it again. You know, um, that's exactly how I viewed them. One and done. One and done. One and done. So this is a little silly pun I like to ask people. Um, do you think audiences will be afraidy or not afraidy of your movie? Um, I hope they'll be afraidy or I'm comfortable. <laughs> I try to make it. Oh, I can't say it. I hope they'll be afraidy. Uh, that would be the goal. At least uncomfortable. That's what I was going for. Just on their edge, on your edge of your seat, uncomfortable. You you got it. You got me uncomfortable. So thank you for that. <laughs> That's cool. And where are people able to watch your movie? Oh, yeah. So November 12th, tomorrow, as I'm having a full-blown panic attack on Apple, iTunes, Amazon, uh, I believe 
um, Xbox, uh, all the streaming platforms, and then on the 26th, Screenbox. So. Yeah. Hey, you know what? It's in the, the universe. Let the horror fans do what they do. It's going to be great. It's going to be That's great. It. You guys are a great community. I have to give you that. But you're a lethal community. Oh, yes. Yeah. 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 So I'm preparing for the worst. So. We will give you hugs, but also slash your Achilles. Yes. No, I'm prepared for both. <laughs> and that's, you know what? The final girl in you, right? That's it. That's it. That's, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm a survivor. I'll, uh, I'll be Nev Campbell. <laughs> yes, you are. Oh, my gosh. Well, thank you so much, Jenny. It's been an absolute blast. Thank you. Isn't she a gem? I just, I'm obsessed with her. I'm absolutely obsessed with Jenny. Please, guys, go watch her movie. Devin, please, please, please. It is so fun. Go give it a review. Go give it reviews. Get it up there. Why not? She's nervous, but don't let her be. You know why? Because it's making a movie's hard, but it's fun, okay? It's damn fun. And she got some haunted shit out of it too, and that's awesome. Ghosts are cool. They're cool. You know what else is cool? This podcast, guys. <laughs> Thanks so much for supporting it. Um, my arm is on fire holding this. Holy crap. But <laughs> make sure to like, subscribe on all social media platforms. Katie Afraidy. Uh YouTube, Instagram, no longer on Twitter. Sorry, Twitter's gone. Um, and yeah, uh, you want a copy of Fangoria? Use code KDFRADY25 or 25% off. And special thank you to our sponsor, Filmcraft Studio Gear. You can find them at Filmcraft LA on Instagram and FilmcraftLA.com. And guys, shoot at more haunted locations. That's the big advice for this movie shoot at haunted locations. And yeah, guys, we will see you next week. Stay spooky. Ah! 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 Ah!